Can I get a Hoya? Hoya! I can't remember in the last video if I told you guys like exactly what the plans were. Other than stuff. Okay, so this is the next day. We clearly got a lot done. We still have a lot more to go. But, uh, wait, is this going in the beginning of the video? Yes, this is that. Oh. Well, this video is brought to you by us and the J's Two Cents Gaming Mats. And the J's Two Cents <laughs> Gaming Mats. We have a lot of these available, jays2cents.com. They're huge, they're like 35 inch by 17 inch, whatever that is in um, Euro units. I don't know. They're extremely flexible. The entire back is nothing but a non-slip surface. The top is extremely slick. It's also very stain resistant and very like tear resistant and rip resistant. It'll glide nice and easily with your mouse. Your keyboard won't slide all over it. Uh, it's got my logo on there and we think it looks very cool. But they're also extremely durable so that you can beat your helpers with them. So get your own at jcsense.com. We'll also have some at the thing. So if you want to get one in person, you can do that too. Okay, so in, in part one, we showed you tearing down the sets and all that stuff. Uh, when Phil was out of town, I showed you, I talked to you kind of what my vision was. Um, so I guess today we'll kind of show you, what, we'll start here. So far, everything you see on this side of the warehouse, and it's not all of it, it's what we have set aside for the uh, pop-up garage sale. So, I mean, let's just kind of take a quick walk around this. And again, this is not all, we haven't even gone through the water cooling stuff. I haven't gone through any of the miscellaneous, like keyboards, mice, GPU external enclosures. Okay, you even have some VR headsets up there. I mean, I don't even, I don't even know. Uh, so the monitors, if you come around over here, graphics cards, graphics cards, graphics cards, graphics cards, graphics cards, more motherboards, 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 more graphics cards, more graphics cards, a lot of AIOs, AIOs, power supply, power supply, power supply, TP link, Casa camera, brand new in the box. You know, it's worth something to someone. So look, check this out. We even have some of the, the mini forums, like little AIO PC things, because they just kept sending them to me like they were currency, even though I never asked for them. So I'm not using them. So somebody else can. Uh, keyboards, the castle of cases, and that's not even all of them, because we still have cases in my storage unit that have been there for years. That you know, it's funny. I think the cases in the storage unit might actually be a little bit more useful to someone than some of these, only because of the fact that they're some of the older, harder to get, can't get them any more favorite cases people had of the era. So anyway, over here, a lot more motherboards, even more motherboards. And then, oh, what I forgot to show, show in this small box right here are several dozen different CPUs. We got DDR3. Anyone looking for DDR3? Like an old rig that you want to expand the memory on or something? Try buying DDR3 new today. Yeah. If you find anything new in box, it's hundreds of dollars because it's old. So we got DDR3. And some of you may even have no idea what this is all about. Um, August 6th in Fullerton, California. That day, um, closer to the event, I'll be telling you the address and the time. I don't want anyone going there in the meantime. But um, we'll be basically having a pop-up sale where we'll be selling not all this stuff, Oh, not just all this stuff, but also gaming mats. We'll be bringing like 50 or so of our JC Sense gaming mats, um, selling them a little bit cheaper than what you would get them for on the website, and potentially even you know signing them if you want me to or whatever, but we'll be having that as well. If there's nothing here you want, but you want a JC Sense gaming mat and you're in the Southern California area, you can show up and get one of those. So I also highly recommend that you follow me on Twitter just for this, even if you just unfollow after, because I will be giving like the first information on Twitter to get people kind of like ready to go. And that's at Jace Two Cents. Um, the day before, and probably even like a video that's set to go live the morning of, telling everyone like, hey, here's where we are, show up and get some stuff. It is gonna be first come, first served. We are gonna have a line. We are gonna have people, you know, in like entrance and exit at the location so that it's first come, first serve. So if, they, if you've been looking at trying to get some awesome parts, and I'm kind of glad that I waited to do this. We talked about doing this last year when prices were really high and I did, I just couldn't bring it upon myself to one, sell the stuff uh, at its inflated rate. And then if I decrease the price, all I'm gonna get were people that were trying to scalp or flip them, buy it and then just sell for more expensive somewhere else. So now the prices have come down to normal and or potentially even crashed. 
Like for instance, you can buy a, a, an, a GTX 1070 right now on eBay for $130. So you know I've got to beat that price. And we've got 1070s. So anyway, uh, definitely worth coming and checking out. But enough of that, enough plugging my own. Um, and no, it's not a giveaway. Don't show up and be like, can I have this? No, you can't. You can get out is what you can do. So this is also probably the perfect time to mention uh, today's secret code for our giveaway. If you have no idea what giveaway I'm talking about, I'm giving someone $5,000 shopping spree at Micro Center to build their dream setup. And uh, today's secret code that you enter for five extra entries is, can I have free PC? C-A-N-I-H-A-V-E-F-R-E-E-P-C. Can I have free PC? It's just like all the emails I've been getting about it. No, you can't have a free PC. Unless you win, then you can have one up to $5,000. Let me start off by saying, a so many of you messaged me with all your ideas. And that's great. It's just very overwhelming. Um, so we went with the original plan that I had, which is phase one is we are gonna be basically taking an exact copy of this wall, minus the bathroom door, and we are gonna just drag it all the way out to about this discolored line right here. Sorry if it were flip flops. You know, if you, if you don't like feet, you should have seen the foot fingers picture I made. <laughs> so. We'll be bringing it all the way out to like this wall right here, or this line. That gives us this giant great room in here to do a lot of stuff with. We're gonna be moving our desks, which are in here. This, this is our office where we currently work. I've got the size compensator rig right here, right? Phil's rig over there. They're proportionate to our body size, okay? <laughs> uh, and then Nick's system over here. Also too, AJ, he was all worried, like make sure my friend's card doesn't end up in that pile. It was already pulled out, don't worry about it. <laughs> Pull out game was on fleek. <laughs> we're gonna be taking all of this out of here when that's done and we're gonna be moving our like work area into one side of the new offices because we want it to be a functional. See, this is our workspace right here, but we don't film in here. So this is like 300 square feet of space that doesn't have a dual purpose. So we're moving it out there, which will also be a nice backdrop. We'll have uniform desks that look similar. Each person will have a budget to kind of like decorate their own area how they want. We'll figure out how we're gonna do some stuff on the wall, make it look nice so it'll be a nice backdrop for certain talking head type videos and whatnot. But that frees this room up to now be sort of dual purpose, two sides. This is where the RTFM show will be making its grand return. I have to block out these windows here, not just for light, but heat, these are like single pane commercial glass windows and the sun comes up on this side because that's west or east. And so it gets hot AF in here with these systems and the sun coming through here. So I'll be making a thermal barrier to put in the window to block the sun. Um, but anyway, RTFM show will be making a triumphant return maybe in September because I need time to get, August is a really busy month for us in terms of like, videos that we already have um, planned and sponsored and fun projects that we just have to get done. And so I can't put off all that for construction. The construction has already completely like gotten in the way, but that's me. I, certain things had to happen in a certain order. But anyway, this is where RTFM show will be coming back. The acoustics in here are pretty good. It won't take much, but some bass traps and maybe some panels on the wall, make it look nice. I'm gonna paint this room kind of like funky colors, like reds and grays and just have it be nice and, and fun. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so the RTFM live stream will be happening in here. So we'll probably keep this area realistically like a break room. I might get a little partition wall to sort of partition it off. This couch isn't staying here. This is actually going to my sister's house. Um, <clears throat> once they're kind of moved in, then we can move that over there. My sister's in my mom's house, so we need to figure that out. <clears throat> but probably a break room corner, probably move the fridge over there or something. Um, put a table or, or whatever here. Because one of the things that we kind of lack is any sort of meeting space. So sometimes vendors want to come to us and be like, hey, we can come show you something. And it's like, well, we don't really have a way to host you. You don't know where to sit. You okay sitting on folding chairs and ottomans? You know, that's about all we got. But my thoughts for this half is this is where our work, our workspace slash video space slash flex space is going to be. So Phil and I, we do a lot of collaborating when we're, when we're making a video. Sometimes he has questions or sometimes he wants me to see an edit or something just stupid happened in video and he edited it, made it funnier and he's like, guys, look at this. And then Nick and I are always having to like turn our chairs around or I'll be talking to Phil and he has to turn his chair around. So in a collaborative effort to make sure that we're not doing that, Phil and I will either occupy this wall right here or potentially the concrete wall. The thing that sucks about the concrete wall, there's no plugs on it, obviously. So we'd be running cords. There is a plug on this wall 
um, and a plug on that wall. But uh, we are on the new wall gonna be having eight new 20 amp power plugs and data drops put in there. So now instead of having ethernet cables run all over the place like everything else, we will have actual networking in here. So we will be getting a network, uh, excuse me, a rack that we're probably get probably like a 20U rack, which has way more than we need, but then we can have a dedicated, like everything wires into it, the, you know, the switch in the backside, it's all nice and bundled and labeled and everything's plugged in. We'll have everybody on 10G finally, so that when we're connecting to our own server, Phil's not the only one on 10G because he's grabbing most of the data editing off the server. It's if I have to move stuff or grab stuff, I get it at one G, one G? One G, five G, five G, five G. Five G, five G, five G. So the concrete wall doesn't have any plugs on it, obviously, because it's a concrete wall. And if I wanted them to run conduit and plugs there, they'd have to start at the panel back at that corner, go all the way up the wall, as you can see, all the way over, probably even farther over here to this beam, or all the way to the edge of the wall, across, and then down the wall. That's a lot of time and effort to bend that uh, conduit. That's why we're gonna have two more on this wall, plus we have one on that wall. So we'll just run a nice, neat, like, contract record or something over to our systems, which is how we've been doing it here anyway. Um, but I'm trying to decide if either Phil and I are gonna be on this wall and Nick on this wall, or vice versa. But um, that way, if, if Phil and I are on the same plane and he wants to show me something with an edit, or I wanna show him some funky crash video compilation that I found, because you know, that's what I contribute to this business, um, we can just turn our head. Now Phil is gonna be able to look at stuff that he shouldn't be looking at without me looking at it too. So if he's gonna be looking at stuff we shouldn't be looking at, we're gonna look at it together and it's gonna be good stuff, okay? Um, Nick's always just kind of moved to his own drum beat, so I don't know what he does during the day. He'll just be able to do it over here now. But the cool thing about this, <laughs> he's probably the only one actually working right now. Yeah, yeah actually, it's, it's rare footage. You gotta he's get it when He's still over here tearing down systems that, see one of the things that I have a habit of doing and I know every, Look, there's not a single tech creator out there that puts a system together for a video just for the sake of putting it together, which we do a lot, and then immediately tears it all back down and puts it all nice and neat in the box. No, we prefer to have it half torn down, then we are like, where's the box? Where's the screws? Where's this missing piece? Where'd this harness go? No, that's the way you do it. Are you done yet? No. Now, if I wanted to have, like literally in the middle of this room, or at a nice 45 degree angle or something, I can have a nice talking headset or a review set, we call it set, it's just a spot to do something. Um, because we're gonna have an overhead ceiling now with, with proper um, supports and stuff, we could potentially finally have a top-down angle for stuff that we've never had a, a top-down angle because that's a really high ceiling. So now we can have a potential top-down angle. I think it'd be neat to have a review slash unboxing area. We're gonna obviously have our test, so we have this whole wall over here too. We have from the opening of this door, all the way to the edge of the bathroom door, where we, now we could set up potential test, testing station or center. So the idea is by off, offloading all this stuff that we've collected and don't need that goes back several generations, we've halved, like halved in half, the space of the storage that we need. Shop set will stay over there where we build, but that will become strictly like case modding, like over, this area over here will become Strictly case modding slash any sort of custom work that needs to be done. So all the PC built stuff will be reorganized. I'll have toolboxes in here. Probably not a standing table, more than like, like, like see how Nick's sitting right here to work on this system? Probably yeah. will just be sitting to work on it. Potentially have a lazy Susan on there so I can just spin the system around when I'm working on it. So I always got up and moved around the table a million times. Um, but now we can actually have tabletop CNC stuff. In fact, I, met, I said that in one of my previous videos. And now I've got a bunch of emails from tabletop top CNC companies wanting to sponsor it, but I'm not gonna just take sponsorships. I wanna research and get good stuff. Like X carve type deal. I wanna start maybe trying to make my own distro plates here and there, you know, cool stuff like that. But it's also gonna be the water cooling area. One of the things I kinda wanna do is in the bathroom, replace the sink that's there, the little porcelain sink, with like a wash basin. That way I have a, a filling slash cleaning area a place to properly drain coolant and stuff. A lot of people suggested I put one out here. Here's the thing, there's no plumbing here. There's no plumbing. If I wanted to pull plumbing for a sink out here, the plumbing in this building comes in through the roof. You see the, I don't know if you can see it, there's the big black like two and a half inch tubes. Those, that's plumbing up there. And then we have to do the fire drop sprinklers in there as well too because of code. But then we would have to jackhammer up the concrete to meet it to wherever the drain is. 
So just turning one of our bathrooms into a wash basin sink where you can still wash your hands and stuff, obviously, but then have a deep like steel, stainless steel basin makes the most sense because then it already goes into the drain. But I'm really excited because now we're gonna have a wall here, obviously, which on this side we can have cabinets on that are gonna allow us to look nice and neat with the door shut, you know? Um, but we're gonna have two power plugs there, two power plugs there on the inside and two more on the outside there, outside there. So now we'll be able to actually have um, proper data and uh, drops as well as power drops because they are gonna be doing data on this side as well. So that means now for my shop set here, you see that ethernet coil up on the ground down there? Nice brown, dirty brown. That's followed us all the way from the other studio because we had to run one all the way across the studio um, in the old, like, two stories. Downstairs, story. yeah. too. Coming from the kitchen area just to get ethernet. So now we can have a, a maybe an ethernet coil that we can just plug into the wall when we need to, uncoil it to wherever we're doing, when we're done, put it back. So, so much potential by just making things nice and neat. Let's talk about the second story mezzanine. Oh, and then also, I forgot to mention the lighting. Um, two, four, six, eight, two by four LED troffers for lighting. Um, and then we have to have um, the plumber come in and drop the fire suppression system in there because that's part of commercial code. And then we will probably have to have a fire extinguisher in this room as well because we have one here. We have one at the front door and then we're gonna need one in the middle right here as well. And then we also are gonna have, and this is what's gonna make Phil happy. We are putting in sound insulation in the wall and on the ceiling. We are trying to control the noise as much as possible. I also have to thread in my HVAC contractor, the same guys that installed this big giant, you know, Yamato looking turret on top of the uh, ceiling here. Um, with herpes though. But three of these registers are going to be providing direct supply air to this office right here. I was like, can we do four? Now it's a calculation with the HVAC. We have about 800 square feet here. It's 20 feet by 40 feet. So at 800 square feet. And I said, can we do four? And he's like, well, technically two is what you need for 800 square feet. I said, yeah, we're a bunch of computers and stuff in there too. And he's like, okay, maybe we'll add a third. That way we can overcome that the heat source. Because you always balance your HVAC systems based on your your heat sources. Heat source in this instance is going to be the warehouse is going to have heat that's going to bleed in, as well as the heat generated inside from the, the computers and such. And so can we just do four? He said the problem is because the supply, which is the air being supplied to the room, has to also have a return to balance airflow, what we're going to end up having are just a couple of vents where the drop ceiling is. It's the type of vent you would have for the return only it's gonna, it's just gonna be kind of open and then sort of shielded on top. That way air can just make its way back out into the warehouse. If we don't have those and we have too much supply, you won't be able to shut the door. It'll literally, it'll literally turn it into a balloon that's blowing up. And when you open the door, it'll just swing itself open. I've dealt with that before. I've gone into offices before you go to shut the door. It's like The nice thing is having that ducting now and it will be wrapped kind of like you see coming down over there. Um, that will also break up some of the really loud turbulent sound that we get coming off of this air handler. Because this air handler makes a 90 out of the handler, cross, a 90 down, and then a 90 again. So we get a lot of turbulent air right there. But I'm excited about this, I really am. This, this is probably the most excited I've been about my channel in a long time. Because I feel like we've been in this just kind of a rut where we're doing the same thing every day. It becomes content creator fatigue. It becomes viewer fatigue. Nobody wants to see the same thing all the time. And this really gives us a lot of opportunity to sort of expand that, what we can do um, and just be excited about it again. So it's my goal with all of this to want to have a little bit of a tax incentive. No, let's talk about the taxes real quick. People are like, you should do the, just spend a ton of money because you'll save money on taxes. No, because I still don't have the other 50%. Let's just use $100,000 as an example. If you have $100,000 in the bank and you have a 50% tax rate, 50 goes to the IRS. But if I spend $100,000 here, it's only a 50%, well, you don't get, it's a depreciated value depending on what the type of purchase it is. I still don't have the money I spent on that or the money I'm giving to the IRS, so I'm still at $100,000. So you have to intelligently spend money. I see all the time people are like, just do whatever, it's just a write-off. It's like that meme, it's like, it's a write-off. What's a write-off? It's where you buy something for your business and the government pays you back for it. Who pays you back for it? I don't know, the, the write-off people. Anyway, over here, the mezzanine. Regarding mezzanine, it's more like mezzanine. So this is the only place we're gonna have to work for like the next two weeks. The idea here is that we would have stairs along the wall that was just put in. 
to a like maybe nine foot high second level with railings and stuff around it and then some shelves up here to give us storage area for big stuff and double the floor space. So if I have 500 square feet right here and I have a second level of 500 square feet, that's the essentially made this unit 500 square feet bigger. The problem is, and that's why I said phase one earlier, this is phase two. I'm gonna be here till 2029 now in terms of my lease. So I have a little bit of time to recoup some costs on this. I can tell you based on what this is costing, this fairly basic 40 foot wall with a door, eight power plus data drops, plus uh, what, eight two by four troffers, HVAC carpeting guy, sprinkler guy, this would be six figures plus, I guarantee it. But Jay, you can just get a prefab metal one. Now, putting a prefab metal thing above where I'm talking does not do a whole lot for the audio. If anything, it makes it terrible, especially if it's corrugated. It would be a wood-built structure, drywall, maybe a couple lights even in the thing shining down. Remember, this is a shop. Lighting here is not a, about it being as perfect or dramatic. It's just about capturing light of something we're building. I want to do this maybe next year. Um, so I didn't have this all done at the same time because another obvious reason is I just said, this is the only place we have to work. So if this became the other half of the project, we literally would have nowhere to work except for this table. This is our set right here, guys. Yes, I know some of you are like, I wish I had that to work with. Trust me, I started with less than that. I know exactly where you're at. I'm just trying to have this all make the most sense. But um, yeah, this is, I'm excited about this. I really am. I think the whole team is. I was hyped about it, Nick was hyped about it, Phil was on vacation, he came back, he edited, I didn't tell him our plans, I just let him edit the video so he could figure out the plans as he watched. And he was like, dude, I'm hyped about this. Me too. So another reason why we can't do a second story above the office because people were asking about, look above the office. You know, drop ceilings have to be supported by something and in this case it's the roof. I am really looking forward to the mezzanine whenever that's done. I'm not really looking forward to what potentially happens to my insurance now having a mezzanine with a railing. That's, that's the cool thing too, is we'd be able to even have like a, a, a down shot of the shop set as well. Then we could drop test stuff. What happens with a graphics card if you drop from the second story? All right guys, thanks for watching. I hope you guys are enjoying the vlog stuff. It'll be exciting when it's all going back together. Please stay tuned on Twitter, at Jace Two Cents, for the pop-up sale in Fullerton, California. Just unfollow after, I don't care. I just, I'm telling you right now, that's where a lot of the information and the sneak peeks and behind the scenes of what we're putting in the boxes and stuff is being shown. Um, if you're not following there because you hate social media, then just turn off all notifications and stuff. Just so you have a way of knowing the details before everyone else, or at least before the general YouTube audience. Thanks for watching guys, and as always, we'll see you in the next one.